My main objective of recording this specific album with this specific ensemble was to be able to capture the band as it stands now in 2014. Um, David and I have been working very closely together, um, gathering a sound and a style and a personnel of like-minded people who love to swing. The band has been working steadily as this unit for several years now. I think it was very important that we recorded this album, Swing Makes You Happy, at this juncture in our career because well, I've been doing this for 35 years now and there's no doubt the band sounds as best as it has so far. And that's something that we take a lot of pride in. Like I said, the arrangements um, and the compositions uh, and the transcriptions. He takes the, um, the nine musicians in this mini big band and really evokes a full big band sound um, by his arrangement trickery. So I first took over the title of musical director. I was very excited to write for the band because I liked all the people in the band. So what I did was I started writing features for every person in the band. I'd either say, hey man, do you like this tune? or what tune do you like? Eddie Pizan asked me to write a chart on um, Without a Song. So, uh, so I wrote an arrangement for him on Without a Song. And then I just started picking tunes for people after that. And uh, I wrote an arrangement for Michael Hashem on uh, It Was a Very Good Year, the Sinatra classic. And as that started, I mean, the esprit de corps really started to develop and got to be a fun place to be every Tuesday and Friday night. I think everybody was excited to come to the gig. And I was, geez, I think I wrote 20 charts in three months. I think I was bringing a chart every gig. I was bringing a new arrangement. It was crazy. What we have is three saxophones, alto, tenor, and barry, and then two trumpets and one trombone. So the task that I'm saddled with is making alto tenor berry bone trumpet trumpet sound like five saxophones, four trombones, and four trumpets. George's band, my characters are tenor saxophone with trombone. That's one character. Another character is baritone saxophone with trombone, or trumpet trumpet trombone, or trumpet trumpet trombone berry. So I have different combinations that I use to get sounds to make the changes in mood happen. These guys are amazing interpreters of music and presenters of music. Uh, when you hear the band, it's powerful. And uh, I think it all starts with what I refer to as the tip of the spear, the, the man who sits right in the middle of the front row, uh, spiritual leader, uh, Ed, Eddie Pizan. Mind you, um, Eddie has a long record even before that, because yeah. he was Lionel Hampton's straw boss yeah, sure. um, yeah. like, throughout the 50s and the I 60s. Think, yeah, right, I think it was almost 20 years, yeah. 15, 20 yeah. years, something like that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, his, um, his street creds go way back. Next to Eddie, another long-standing member of the ensemble, Michael Hashem. And Mike is just uh, a bundle of energy, and, and information. Yes. yes. Oh my goodness, man. He brings he brings a texture and richness to everything he does just because he knows so much. Right. And then and then next on the other side of Eddie Pizan we have uh, I believe the, the youngest member of the ensemble, yeah? Uh, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well both age wise possibly and um um experience with the George G. Swim Orchestra, right? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Right. And that's uh, a baritone saxophone is yeah. Anthony Lustig. Yeah, Anthony Lustig. Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, and uh he's a, a newer member of the ensemble and um and he, he's a very rock solid cat with a lot of enthusiasm and we like having him around we like having him around also. Yeah, he's got a <laughs> terrible sense of humor and he's really no fun to hang with after the gig though. But we tolerate it. David's arrangements are feature on the CD, Swing Makes You Happy. Um, there's a lot of demand on, the, on both trumpet men to be jazz players and lead players. Yep. And Andy and Freddie are like... It's ridiculous, man. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous because not only can... They're both very solid 
lead players. I mean, like, you would listen to them and think that's, that's all they did. And then they play jazz and you say, but wait a minute, how is that possible? The rhythm section, man. Your rhythm section's been around for a while. Yeah. Uh, Steve Einerson on the piano. Steve and, uh, Marcus Ooh. McLaren. On bass. Who, and, then, and then, of course, uh, on the drums. Right, Willa Dyson. Willa Dyson. Sweet Willie D. Yeah, Willa and Dyson. You know, Willa Dyson, besides being a, a solid swinging uh, technician and artist on the drums, um, but him and Eddie Pizan, the tip of the spear, believe it or not, they have both been in a band for 20 years. Wow. And they're starting the third decade in wow. the next year. Wow. When I first joined the George G. Swing Orchestra, I was struck by the persona that is our male vocalist, John Dokes, uh, because he's, he's kind of a triple threat because he's singing and he's dancing and then he's got like that smile that puts you know grown women into a flutter you expressed to me interest in having a female vocalist as a partner and foil and, and uh, another part of the show and I immediately thought of uh, Hillary Gardner right, who was right. uh, the female vocalist with the band and and Hillary came in and just knew right what to do and she and John have a wonderful rapport mm -hmm. uh, on stage it's it's nice to watch I love writing duets for them because they inevitably take the lyrics and play characters with each other it's fun to watch it's always swinging I watch this couple in the front row the tune is like uh, and this couple started dancing the uh-uhs. So <laughs> they were stopped when the melody was playing and they played the, you know, and they immediately were interacting with the music, man. That struck me so much. Right, right, right. And, and yeah. you see that we have a lot of regular dancers who come out to our steady gig at Swing 46 um, on 46th Street in Manhattan. Yeah. Yeah. Times Square. Yeah, Times Square. Yeah, Restaurant Row. Yeah. New York City. Yeah, my kind of town. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So these regular dancers come out, and now they know our tunes. Oh, of course. And they all dance the arrangements. You know, these are tunes that I wrote for this so band. So when when George and I started talking about doing this recording, I knew where I thought we should record it. Uh, I wanted to work with Glenn Forrest and Ian Henderson Smith. Um, so I suggested to George that I contact Glenn and see about getting into Studio G, Room B, and uh, it worked out. And we scheduled, uh, we scheduled one day to record all the material. We had a lot of material to record. Um, we all set up in one room. Um, the piano was on one side of the room and then there was a baffle between, and then the horns were lined up kind of facing the piano. And then on our left, there were two booths, one booth for the drums, one booth for the, um, for the bass. And we all had individual mics, but there, were also, uh, there was a room mic capturing the live sound, and then there was also a reverb. Uh, I, I, let me tell you what, man. When we recorded that record, I could not believe the level of focus and professionalism exhibited by the people in this band. Um, I mean, there were no, there were no overdubs. There were, it, it was just like, we just went in and played. The vocalists came in and they sang along with the band. Like, right. they didn't come in and do their tracks later. They sang with the band in the studio. People don't do that anymore. The fact that we were able <coughs> to crowdfund and find some private investors that believed in us um, really, really, really touched me. Um, so I, 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 I do plan on more recording projects in my career, but from what I can see and of Swing Makes You Happy, um, this is our the, the George G. Swing Orchestra's best work ever. So, 
if the listeners of Swing Makes You Happy, one, tap the toes and snap the fingers and smile and take a little bit of that happiness beyond the, uh, uh, the parameters of that um, way they're listening to it on the stereo or whatnot and spread that joy outwards, then just my little way of hopefully making the world a little bit of a better place. It may sound too uh, simple, but it's really what I honestly believe in. I hear that.